Thank you so much to today's Patreon sponsors, Minnesota Wax and Folk Bear. Their support helps make these videos possible. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew AJT and welcome back to Trailblazer Episode 5. So in the previous video we finished at 901 total, and here's 60 strength. We are going to add 152 total levels in this video from the previous one, so a lot of progress to show in a short period of time. Here's a curved bone drop, which I forgot to show in the previous video. Very rare to get one of these. It's over 1 in 5,000. So let's get another Slayer task, which is Chaos Druids, which is a good task, but for the rest of the video, I'm actually going to focus on skilling. I want to just improve my account overall more, and there's still lots of ways I can do it through some of these skills. So agility, I don't know why I decided to train agility. It's not really that useful because of the infinite run energy, but it does unlock some shortcuts, and I can't really think of too many right now that are useful, but when I get to that point where I need them, I'm sure I'm going to look back and say I'm glad I trained agility because I'll already have access to them. And there's also some points we can get. So at first I was thinking for this week maybe I should go all out and just try to do tasks, and that would be a respectable strategy because I do want to unlock the wilderness. However, because there are so many other skills I can train, I am still getting lots of tasks completed by doing skills, not quite at the rate I was getting them before, but I would rather do the tasks after I get the skills up. Many of them require a certain skill level anyway, so it does help. The best strategy would actually be to do them at the same time, to train stuff and go for tasks with a specific plan of how to do that. That would be the most efficient way and save the most time. However, that would actually require quite a lot of planning as well. And Trailblazer is so fast that I would rather just spend that planning time training the skills. I mean, I guess I could do it while I'm AFKing stuff, but there's still so much to do as far as skilling goes that I'm not going to be laser focused on tasks just yet. I think just the fact that we're having this conversation though does speak to how well-made Trailblazer is because there are so many elements to it. There's points, there's tasks, there's areas, there's the relics. There's a lot of new factors to consider when playing Trailblazer that you don't get in the normal game. One thing I was really not looking forward to doing though was farming and it ended up being as slow paced as I thought it would be. So I'm going to skip over a lot of it in this video, but I did train quite a bit of farming and you'll see the end result, but my farming level wasn't even really that good by the end of it. Really the major problem, and I wish they would fix this in future leagues, is you cannot get the XP from Fairy Tale Part 1 because it's auto-completed. In the main game, it gets you to level 17 farming from level 1, which is really useful, and in Trailblazer that would have been saving you multiple hours of farming, especially the early levels, which are just quite boring because you can only plant like onions and stuff and strawberries, which really don't give much XP. Even with the boosted XP, it's not very fast. Skilling Prodigy does give me more options as far as what I can plant, but it's still difficult because seeds are not always easy to come by. We'll do some thieving of Master Farmers later, which does help, but getting tree seeds in particular I think is going to be difficult. Farming is especially tricky as an Iron Man, which is another big factor, and we don't have access to Zaya, which has the Farming Guild and also the Tithe Farm, which are important places for the farming skill in the modern game. But in the meantime, if we are ever going to get back to Slayer next week, we should really get some better food first. So lobsters are a great way to do that, and I can get quite a bit of fishing and cooking levels by catching and cooking them. I wasn't sure if I should cook them here or in the Cook's range in Lumbridge. It wouldn't have wasted too much time to do them in Lumbridge because it is pretty close to a bank, but the one in Catherby is so convenient, it's on the way to the bank. I couldn't really figure out how the Cook's range works. I know for certain things it does have a better chance of cooking them successfully compared to other ranges, but I'm not sure if it would actually help in this situation. It might only work on certain foods. I didn't do too much research into this, so maybe someone in the comments can clarify. I just figured if it did help, it probably was not much of a boost. You would think that it would just be like an invisible plus one cooking boost or something simple, but many things in this game that were programmed a long time ago are overly complicated compared to how things are today. Just look at the Barrow's drop table and how kill count affects it. That was a mystery for quite a long time. Whereas something newer, like the Woodcutting Guild, you know it's just a plus 7 boost, and it's very simple. Maybe you have to do a little bit of research to find out how it affects you if you're already 99, or if you use the Dragon Axe special attack since the guild bonus is invisible, but overall you can look that up very easily. 
So next I decided to do some thieving and I don't know why I decided this because I didn't have a particular reason for training it again at the time. But I was wondering that maybe the plus 12 skilling prodigy boost would make the Knights of Arty a little bit easier and it really wasn't because they were still catching me very often. So thank you to Caleb in the previous video who in the comments reminded me that you can actually get a nature rune from this chest in upstairs East Arty. Now it's not amazing because it takes 15 seconds to respawn just for one nature rune, and you can hop worlds, but it doesn't really seem to save much time. Maybe you could get 200 or so in an hour, and the XP isn't very fast, but it is a really nice place to get some nature runes if you're low on them. If you just need 20 or 30, like in my situation, it's very useful. So thank you so much to Caleb for the suggestion. It definitely did get slightly easier to do Arty Knights as time went on and the success rate went up, although... You really have to get to like level 80 something effective level to have a really good chance of thieving them almost every single time. So I kind of glossed over this when I unlocked it, but the nice thing about fluid strikes is the four times HP restoration rate. And you can combine this with rapid heal for some really fast HP. And in addition, because you have infinite prayer with the last recall and arty cloak, you can recharge your prayer very quickly and pretty much use rapid heal almost all the time, as you saw there, so definitely a really nice thing to do for thieving, and it shows how useful relics are when you combine them. So by the end of the video, the last skill I really haven't covered yet will be construction, and I'll get a house here, but that's about it. I'm not really sure where to start with construction, so if anyone has suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. I know I can get some planks in the wilderness, which I intend to unlock at this point, and also near barbarian assault, so... I could probably smith some nails and make some chairs out of those. So here's a mystery box. Let's see what we're going to get. 20 nature runes. We were just talking about nature runes, and here's some more of them. So very fortunate there. I was wondering when I would finally get my first mystery box, and that was a pretty good reward. So it's really cool when skills help you train other skills, and I know I said I didn't really have a plan for training thieving, but one thing that it did help is with these master farmers, I was able to get quite a lot of seeds much quicker, and I got a few herbs as well. I was able to plant a renar and harvest it successfully, and also these taromans, and ultimately some harlanders as well. And I made some energy potions, which are useless, but I also made some strength potions, and I was able to get the limpwort roots from farming, so... Farming is really making herb lore much easier. The strength potions in turn will make Slayer easier. So with all this herb lore and also cleaning some grimy herbs, I got to 24 herb lore. And we are finishing up at 1053 total. Not bad. I also have the Raynars and I could make prayer potions soon, but I'm not sure if it's worth it because of the infinite prayer thing. But maybe in Deep Wilderness, where you can't use the Arty Cape Teleport, the prior potions would be useful. So feel free to leave any input in the comments on that as well. So that'll do it for today. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and also subscribe. I typically upload every Tuesday. You can join my clan chat and game, AndrewAJT62, up on screen, and my Discord server down below. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram down below. And if you would like to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon page in the end screen. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next week.